Now I would like to ask Professor Błażej Kmieciak to join us and uh, take over. Um, let me see. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the invitation for this great conference. I know that uh, my first name, Błażej, is quite difficult for you. <laughs> Not so difficult like Grzegorzewska, but, but it's quite difficult. Uh, you can speak this in other way, Blaise, Bless, or in Italian, Biagio, like you prefer. This is a strange situation because quite young guy will talk about love. <laughs> yes. But for me, uh, I am um, a special pedagogist and sociologist of law. And perspective of human rights is very, very close to me. And human rights of, of people with, uh, with disabilities and intellectual disabilities is very close to me because I am, uh, I've got a younger sister with intellectual disability. And when I am talking with Mary, she's name is Mary, I'm sometimes thinking, what is, what, what's she thinking about law? What's she thinking about love, about relationship, about uh, future? about some perspective of being close to other person. And uh, first of all, uh, my, my plan of reflection will be uh, what do we want to, why, why do we want to get married? I got married when I was 21 and my friend from, from study, from, he, he said to me that I am insane person, that I need to go to psychiatry if I want to go to marry. To be a, 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 so, so this was. Uh, I remember in church he, he came to me and he said to me, "You are stupid." <laughs> so, so this was a funny experience. Is there a right to marry? Do we have that kind of right? Can people with intellectual disability get married? And uh, this will be a reflection from our country or our beautiful country from Poland. Two reflections. Uh, first of all, this will be laughing therapy because I cannot speak in English. My my grammar is horrible. And I'm sorry for this. I will forget lots of words. My my wife, she says to me, she says to me, don't use words that you don't understand. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use lots of words in this way. But second reflection is, this is my first time here because I am professor of uh, Maria Grzegorzewska University since f February of this year. So this is my first time here. And this is great honor for me because persons like Dr. Janusz Korczak and Professor Grzegorzewska uh, are amazing for me and very close to me. So, so this is a few words of, of beginning. Well, marriage. That is an unusual and unique relationship, relationship between two persons. The person that feels something, uh, not only I like you, but I love you. We cannot define the love. I know that there are lots of people who want to define this word. But for, for all of us, these words mean different. Uh, for my wife, it's it's uh, it's very important word. And for my wife, for instance, it's important to be with her, close to her. And for me, are very important words. Unusual and unique contact between two persons. We know about this. Um, conscious, con, uh, conscious decision is necessary. I need to know what I am doing, my friend. Like I told you, he was uh, he he thought that I don't know what I have done. Okay, we've got this, and this is form of agreement in per, in legal perspective. This is form of legal agreement without an expiration date. I I am husband with that uh, gold ring, not to twenty twenty five on or, or for next five or six years. No, I want to be a husband. Until the ma uh, until the my or or my wife that's so this is unusual relationship we know I think about this all but uh, why do we want to have a husband or wife this is a strange situation I, I remember what I, I have wrote why why do we want to have that kind of person close to us husband or wife why do we need some somebody like husband or wife well we do not want to be alone. Being alone is horrible feeling. Uh, I've got a friend, he's a priest, and he said to me one day, you see, the most difficult for me is to be alone. I am going home and I know that I'm going to be alone. And this is quite difficult for me. The relationship with another person gives us a straight 
for me, give me also a hope. Uh, I'm going to, after the speak, speak uh, I'm going to uh, by the train to my home. I will talk with my wife about this. I will talk with her about funny situation. And this is important for me to talk with her about, to talk with her about this element that is, that is important for me. We need the support of somebody who knows us. It's amazing feeling that I've got close to me a person that I can tell she know what I am thinking. She know who I am and she can tell me concrete words that are important for me. Well, but can everybody get married? This is a slide, this is a photo from amazing Polish movie. It calls uh, Sonata. It's, this is history of young boy with intellectual disability. It is an authentic story, he wanted to be a musician. Well, but he was, his name was Grzegorz, this is Grzegorz and Justyna. He was diagnosed with mind intellectual disability, significant hearing loss and suspected autism disorder. And this was concrete problem for him, but he wanted to be a musician. And he, I, I can tell you that this is a true story. He is a blues, blues musician. He, he, he's playing piano, great, great musician in Poland. But she, Justyna, she suffered from paranoid schizophrenia. She was a patient of psychiatric hospital. And there is a question, can this couple get married in Poland? Well, I need to tell you that th this will be the problem because Article 12, I will read this from the P Family and Guardianship Code. It, it said that a person suffering from mental illness, like for instance, schizophrenia and mental ret 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 uh, ret retretion, I hate this word, cannot enter into marriage, cannot. This is the norm, this is a ban. You cannot be a marriage, you cannot be a wife or husband if you've got mental illness or intellectual disability. However, this is uh, extraction. If the state of health of mind of such a person does not treat the marriage, treat the marriage or the health of future offspring, I can hear here some form of eugenic thinking, in my opinion. And if the person has not been completely incapacitated, the court may allow him to enter into a marriage. So the norm is you do not have a right. This couple here do not have right to get married. But there is a possibility to have a marriage with court acceptation and allowing. In uh, nearly 10 years ago, Polish Constitutional Tribunal found that Article 12 of this family code is consistent with the Polish constitution, mostly with the rule of the dignity. This was a strange situation for me because, in my opinion, this is a problem because I know a lot of people with intellectual problems, with also mental problems. I was nearly 10 years and psychiatric ombudsman in lots of uh, Polish uh, hospitals, psychiatric hospitals, and lots of people, lots of my patients do not have in fact right to have wife or husband. But you see, Article 23 of Convention of the Rights of the Person with Disabilities, Disabilities says that states, parties shall take effect and appropriate measure to eliminate discrimination against persons with disabilities in all matters relating to the marriage, family, parenthood and re relationship. We can see that we need to have an appropriate age to marry and frequently experience and full cons consent of the future spouses. So, international law, it says to us that all people, also people with intellectual disability, they have right to get married. There are also ele important elements that should be taken down, but this is general rule, general norm. You see, relative marriage of uh, relative marriage ban in Polish Pol Polish constitutional law. Uh, lots of lawyers they are talking about that. This what I am talking to you. The Article 12 of Family Code is in fact relative marriage ban. But th is this a legalization fear, or this is discrimination? 
Well, you see, what is the law of rate of? In my opinion, as a legal sociologist, I can read this, and I think that Polish law is afraid of marriage of people with intellectual disability. Why? Well, persons with intellectual disability can she give, she or her, give informed consent to marriage. This is a, I, I know, I, as a, a special pedagogist, I know that this could be a problem, but this is not the general problem. I will show you some, some concrete cases of this. Does she or he understand whether there is uh, mater, ma, uh, marital responsibility? In my opinion, I got a problem with understanding what is a responsibility in marriage sometimes. For me also, this is sometimes a problem. Well, next, can she or he make an informed decision about having children? This is a question for all of people, not only for people with intellectual disability. Well, is organic thinking still present now? You see, I am a pers person with visual disability. I was born and for nearly five, six years, I was a blind person. And you can see, if you're close to me, that my eyes are moving slowly, but they are moving. And if maybe there is a possibility that I, I cannot have also a wife, maybe there is a freight that my daughters will also have a problem with, with, with vision, with seeing somebody. Maybe for, for my person, it should be also that kind of norm that will ban me a possibility to have a marriage. In Polish Article 12, we can see that kind of thinking, in my opinion. Well, discrimination or legitimization concern. Well, limiting the number of children with disabilities, no. This is the organic thinking. If you will go to the history of uh, Nazi Germany, there was that kind of thinking. The authority were afraid that they will born children with disability because people with intellectual disability love themselves. This is organic thinking in my opinion. We are afraid that there will be an intellectual problem with children that will born children with intellectual disability. This is eugenic thinking. But informed concern question, yes, for me, this is the reasonable concern. We need to know what is the responsibility of marriage. We need to understand what is the acceptation to be a husband or a wife. This is important in the moment of getting married. Protection of people with intellectual disability from economic exploitation. Show me this here in Grzegorzewska University, a few students that show me this perspective that they told me that there is a dangerous sometimes that there will be some form of economic abuse for people with intellectual disability. So the court needs to analyze the situation. Well, but you can see in, in, in the concrete cases, this is a case of Tommy and Mary and Pilling. You see the people with Down syndrome, probably within some intellectual problems with intellectual disability. But for me, these are beautiful person, amazing person. Unfortunately, uh, Tommy has died a few, a few years ago because of COVID-19. But you can see amazing relationship. And for me, this is the perspective that we need to, we need to see in, in global debate, in Polish debate also about the possibility of having marriage with people with intellectual disability. Well, current regulation in Poland introduce an arbitrary ban on a marriage people with intellectual disability. Yes, there, there's, there is a possibility to have um, uh, some, some permission from, from, permission from, from, uh, from, from court. Court can allow us to, to, to have this marriage, but we can see the general ban of the situation. I think that this is not good information for lots of people. This, this is discrimination for people. It, it, you see, the, the problem, prohibition does not apply, for example, for people with addiction to alcohol. This is not a problem. You can be a person with problem with alcoholism, with addiction, and you can get married if you want. Okay, this is not a prob problem. Well, necessary change and concrete propos proposal, proposition. Everyone, adult, has a right to marry. General concert results from the human dignity. I think that people with mental and intellectual disability, they need to know that they've got that, that form of rights. 
rights to love also in formal way because having that kind of gold ring for lots of people is very important because this is a concrete message that I'm close to other person. This is a concrete important message for them. When in case of justified doubts, they, that can be that kind of situation. I know this from my pra practice from psychiatric hospital. As to informant consent, for instance, marriage should be possible after obtaining court concert. I think that this is reasonable. This is this is for me quite obvious. Well, the nearly last slide. This is a uh, Sader. Sader is a doctor of medicine. This young between this the young guy between these two two person, and this guy uh, you see from from left is his father with Down syndrome, and on the right there is his his mother. They are married from lots of years. And he said, uh, in one interview, said, Sadr said that relationship with his father was for him, also as a doctor, very important. He teach him that level, that form of empathy that cannot teach lots of professors, our students, I believe so. Well, I am legal sociologist, I'll tell you. And law, we've got in our head, if we want to build some rules that respect human rights and human dignity, we need to imag imagination the situation of concrete group, of concrete person. What is the situation of concrete person with, for instance, intellectual disability? Then we need to put on our empathy. Empathy in legal reflection is quite important. And the next is action, a built, concrete, uh, wise and friendly uh, rules of law. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor. I'm glad that you mentioned empathy. At 13.15, we expect uh, young researchers from the local college um, who will talk to us about their project, youth-led project on empathy.